Hello, my name is Matt Cedarberg uh, from T-Spines Inc. and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar about how to use T-Spines and 3D Coat to convert triangle mesh data to NURBS. I'm joined today by Kyle Houchins from the Outside Digital Art and Design Consultancy and Juan Santocono from T-Spines who will be assisting us with answering questions during the webinar. So um, this is a, a unique webinar for us in that we're going to be demoing a product that we did not write. Uh, we do resell 3D Coat and offer a bundle of 3D Coat and T-Spines, but 3D Coat was made by a Ukrainian company called Pilgway. So why are we putting on this webinar? Uh, the reason is that we often get questions about whether T-Spines can be used for reverse engineering or fitting a, a surface to scan data. And our answer is always not really. And then we usually try to recommend special reverse engineering programs that do a good job at this. And um, there are great packages out there, but um, the problems they usually cost between, I mean, upwards of $10,000, which is out of the budget of a lot of the people that we talk with. Um, so lately, we've come across some other programs that are far cheaper and still do a decent job in helping out with this problem of fitting uh, NURBS or T-Spines data to, um, to a mesh file. Um, so some of these programs include uh, Rhino Resurf, Topogun, ZBrush, and 3D Coat. So um, today in this webinar, we'll, we'll talk more about 3D Coat, but our, our hope is really that this thing can just be a conversation. We hope that you will, you're all muted, but we hope that you'll type in questions and comments and suggestions in the uh, in the chat box of GoToWebinar. Um, this is a, a problem of interest to a lot of people and we've, we've heard a lot of good feedback and, and we'd, we'd just like to kind of share all that information so that hopefully we can come away from this webinar. Uh, one, hopefully knowing how to use uh, 3D Coat um, and actually figuring out how that program can work but also coming out with other ideas about um, just what the options are out there for, for fitting triangle mesh data uh, with NURBS. So, Let's just talk a little bit about the background of 3D Coat. Again, it's made by Pilgway, a small company uh, in the Ukraine. And it's mainly used by artists for digital content creation, voxel sculpting, and con uh, texture modeling for rendering. But the main part of 3D Coat that's interesting to us today is their auto-retopology tool, which can be useful for some reverse engineering cases. Um, and just as a summary, again, um, of, of why we're talking about this today, the competitive solutions are expensive, dedicated reverse engineering software, and 3D Coat does work well in specific use cases for, for a good price. So let's just talk about the, for the best results when using the software, you're, you're going to want to use a closed mesh. You're going to want to have an organic shape that you're trying to fit to with a low amount of detail without any hard edges. And uh, then again, the benefit of this is that once you, um, once you have that model retopologized in 3D Coat, you can uh, convert it to T-spines and then continue to, to model it in T-spines. So here's just a couple of, of good examples and good experiences that we've, have it, we've had with 3D Coat. This is a, a model of an UMI, which was designed in T-spines uh, by, by Martin Broen. And he was kind enough to let it, we, we gave away these UMIs as, as gifts at, at SolidWorks World a few months ago. And he was kind enough to let us kind of demo his UMI model, but we only had the model, we didn't have the model in T-spines anymore. So we had this kind of a dense NURBS model that we converted to a mesh, brought that through 3D Coat, and we were able to get a nice low poly model that we converted to T-spines, and then we were able to push that into TS elements for SolidWorks and push and pull and, and work on that as a nice imported solid body. Um, another good example or good experience that we've had is this humanoid toy where again, you can start with an STL file, retopologize that in 3D code, and then bring that into, into Rhino or SolidWorks. And uh, again, you can see the, the similarities between these is all, are all that there. There's not hard edges. It's a nice, soft, organic uh, model. We thought we'd also show some, some uh, examples that where we haven't been able to succeed quite as well. Here's a scanned mesh that uh, we got from Direct Dimensions. And you can see when we ran that through 3D Coat, um, we got it, the general shape right, but we lost some of the hard edges. And so that's just something to be aware of, is if those hard edges are important to you, um, 
this perhaps might not be the, the best process. And again, this is another example of a scanned mesh. This is the scanned mesh, and here's the, the 3D code and T-spline. So that's just some of the examples of the, of the type of output that you can expect from here. So um, that's just kind of the, the background introduction they wanted to give. And I'm going to turn the time over to Kyle, who will actually walk us through 3D code and T-spines and, and show this process. And again, we'd just like to really encourage everyone to ask questions or make comments, or if there's something that you know a different software package does really well, please share that information. We'd love to just have this be a nice, uh, nice conversation. So um, go ahead and turn the time over to Kyle now. Hey everybody, thanks for coming. Um, just to kind of build on what Matt was saying, the, there's an interesting development that's happened um, over the last, basically, I guess, couple of years here, where the, the 3D computer world was kind of develop, divided into three categories. You've got your polygonal, uh, special effects, video game, entertainment, industry guys, you've got your industrial design, NURBS, Rhino, Alias guys, and then you've got your CAD, uh, solids, you know, Pro-E, SolidWorks, you know, guys. And, and everybody's kind of on a parallel path, but there wasn't very many opportunities for crossing over. If you were starting in ZBrush or Soft, you know, Softimage or, uh, you know, uh, Studio Max or something like that and built something and sent it to Rhino, there was always this kind of complaint that like, well, that's great, but I can't do anything with it because you'd get, um, you know, you'd get a mesh in from Studio Max or something like that that would look like this. Um, Studio Max mesh actually would be better than this, but the, the, the problem was you'd end up with a triangle mesh that was of such a density that there really wasn't anything that you could do with it. And so, there was kind of this separation between people who are working in one area of, of, of 3D design and the people who are working in the other area of 3D design. And, and the interesting development that's kind of come out of this, and it's been a, a discussion lately kind of between Matt and, and Juan and I, is how T-Splines kind of is becoming a little bit like the Rosetta Stone of the CAD world and the fact that it is possible now um, with some additional tools and a little bit of creativity and some reasonable expectations to start in one genre of 3D design, like say if you were starting in, in Max or ZBrush or something like that, and then end up in SolidWorks or Pro-E and it with, with something that's actually usable on the engineering side. So we're kind of tailoring this towards um, kind of an industrial design mindset and the fact that if you were to imagine a studio that had sculptors and industrial designers and engineers kind of all working within the same studio, how kind of what's the process that you would do to make sure that the assets that everybody's generating are able to be leveraged across the board? And T-Splines has kind of shown up as an, as an interesting pivot point for all of these technologies to kind of pass through one another and, and allow a considerable amount of collaboration uh, between, the, between each individual software. So let's kind of run through this a little bit. And the idea behind this, this webinar is not necessarily to show you know, how great we are at 3D code, because to be completely honest, we, we were just joking about it before it started. Um, we kind of suck at it. But the fact is, we want to show one little piece of how it can be used and kind of open a dialogue as to how these tools can kind of be pieced together and you use a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you combine them into something to be able to replicate uh, a workflow that, that wouldn't necessarily be attainable by uh, a typical design studio. And, 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 you know, there's a product out there called Geomagic, which is probably the, the state-of-the-art reverse engineering tool, which does a really, really good job of this. Um, the problem is it's, it, I think it's like 38 grand. And that puts it out of the reach of, certainly out of my studio and, and out of a lot of other people who are in, kind of in my price range. Um, and the, the end result that you get out of that is essentially nerves patches that are imported into SolidWorks as kind of a dumb solid. And, and it makes it difficult to edit. 
the interesting aspect of this is the fact that T-splines actually uh, allows you to start with an STL file and end up with something in SOLIDWORKS that could actually be modified uh, and used um, on the engineering side. And, um, and so th that's kind of why we put this together, mostly as a way to kind of foster a dialogue and to get people thinking about the possibility of this type of workflow and hopefully to get the community involved and you know there's a lot of creative guys out there and and we really uh, would like to to kind of hear your thoughts and if you've got an improvement on this or you're better at it than we are by all means uh, jump in and let us know and we'll get you your own webinar so <laughs> so that's my little spiel let's get started and this is basically what we're using as a demo piece is is this guy here and if you notice this this mesh is kind of a mess. If you were to try to work on this in, in ZBrush, um, it would, you know, there's all sorts of topology issues and stuff like that. This would be a terrible candidate for conversion to uh, a T-splines model because there would be a star point at each one of these triangles, and this would be pretty much an insta-crash kind of model. So um, let's let's run this through let's run this through the process here and and show you kind of what we've ended up with and. Um, so I'm going to jump into 3D code, and basically um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the import, import dialog here, and we're going to import for auto topo. And I'm going to use the STL file here. And what's going to happen when this comes in, I'm going to just accept the defaults here. Um, you can modify those, those options if you need to um, to get a, a higher density mesh. So what happens here is this, this STL file gets brought in and it gets turned into a voxel model. And if you're not familiar with voxel modeling, basically what voxels are, if you imagine this model being made out of grains of sand, um, and then the density of the voxel is just basically how big those grains of sand are. So the smaller the grains of sand, the more detail you can hold. Um, the and the larger the file gets, the larger the grains of sand, obviously the smaller file, less detail. So, this, is, this has been voxelized at a fairly decent resolution. Um, everything looks pretty good here. So let's go ahead and run through the auto topo process. The, the first step of this process is, um, is a paint function. And basically what this allows you to do, um, if you had fingers or toes or something like that that was, that was considerably smaller or considerably tighter than the rest of the detail on the model, you can actually come in here and paint areas where you want smaller quads. And um, in this case, we're not going to do that, so I'm going to ignore it, but I just wanted to speak to this, um, to this functionality. And basically what, it, what you're doing is you're adding twice the amount of quads in the areas that you paint, and then 3D Coat will go through and calculate that and give you actually smaller quads in the areas um, where you have painted. So for this particular character, we're going to go ahead and skip this. And the next thing that we're going to do is, is come up with, uh, we're going to add some guides to, to tell 3D Coat how we want the, uh, the topology to run. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag curves through the legs here. And if I draw on the model, it puts a curve on the model. If I start off and end off, it puts a curve that runs through runs through the entire model here, so it, it basically just shoots a curve straight through the model. So what I can actually do is I can drag a curve all the way through and get both sides, or I can run through individually. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and very simply add some parallel lines through here. And I'm sure there's a million people out there who are better at this than I am, but this is just in my experimentation what kind of a layout system that worked uh, for this demo. So. And go ahead and drag some curves through here, drag one through the neck, and then kind of tell it how I want it to run around the torus here. Maybe one more there. And um, so we've laid it out, and basically what we're telling it is we want quads to run kind of in a radial fashion here, we want them to straighten out, and then we want them to run fairly linearly running through here. Maybe I'll shoot one through the armpit here to help it make that corner. 
and we're going to hit next. And then basically what's going to happen is it's going to take that, that data, uh, that guide information, and it's going to um, generate basically the layout for the quad patches. And it does this, you know, automatically. So sit here for a second while it thinks. It does make a nice closed mesh. And you notice that the layout that we get here is actually fairly decent. There's a little bit of stink in here, and there's some tools in, uh, in here where we can slide edges and things like that. If we, if we come in here, we can kind of move some of this stuff around. But for this demo, that's going to that's gonna work fairly well for what we need. Um, you may want to throw a guide down the edge of this to keep it from twisting, but for this demo, this will work. So we're going to export. <clears throat> we're going to say this is the, we'll, it goes out as an OBJ, so I'm going to just say this is Taurus Head 2. And we're going to jump back to Rhino. Let me get rid of this guy. And he comes in fairly huge, so I'm just going to rescale him real quick. Let me just check the units that it came in. I think it came in at, no, it came in at inches. And let's take a look at what we got. So it actually came in nice and clean, fairly smooth. You can tell that shoulder area in there is not great, but we can always fix that in T-splines if we need to. So let's run through the T-splines workflow. We're going to just um, we're going to go into the creation menu and we're going to convert uh, mesh to T-splines. I'm going to just pick this, right-click to accept, and you'll notice that the mesh mesh is now faceted because this is essentially an a unsmooth T-splines mesh. And all we need to do to get it to be smooth is to Turn on the heads-up display. This is the new heads-up display, by the way, um, and uh, we're soliciting feedback for this. So if you like it, speak up. If you don't like it, speak up. And especially if you don't like it, um, jump into Photoshop and tell us how you'd like it to change. <laughs> Send that to Matt. So let's just go ahead and switch to smooth mode by hitting the tab key. It smooths it in T-splines. So this is now a smooth T-splines mesh that can be edited in T-splines just like anything else. And you'll notice actually that stuff over here is, is all right. You may want to go into T-splines and, and reflow some of those edges or do whatever you want to do. And, but that's a different webinar. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select these edges over here just to do a quick modification. Um, I'm going to use the band UDT. Remember, of course, that if you use UDTs, you want to do them on the points, not the faces or edges. I'm going to bend that arm a little bit, and let's go ahead and change his leg just a hair here. I just want to get across the point here that, you know, within reasonable expectations, there, there is, you know, modification possibilities here. You can go in and take out edges, add edges, you know, all that kind of stuff. You could do a little bit of decimation on your own here if you wanted to manually. Or even better, uh, Matt has, has mentioned that there's a possibility of coming up with a quad decimator, which would be really, really awesome. Um, so if you want that, bug him like I do daily. Um, and then, uh, so basically what we've got is a, is a, a decent... T-splines file here, everything's good, it's smoothing so we know that the mesh is valid. And we're just going to export this. So I'm going to export selected. And I'm going to send this out as a TSM file. And basically, what that will do is that will allow me to shoot this into SolidWorks. And we're going to SolidWorks here. 
my 3D code skills are only rivaled by my SOLIDWORKS skills. So feel free to point and laugh. Um, so we're going to open this up in, Sol in SOLIDWORKS. <clears throat> And you'll notice that it converts it into NURBS patches, but if we go into the feature tree here and edit this feature, then using TS Elements in SOLIDWORKS, we have access to the, the Virtus Edge and Face details uh, within the SOLIDWORKS file. So <clears throat> let's beat this dead horse just a little more, and I'm going to just throw a sketch on this plane. Juan taught me how to do this, so basically everything that makes me look talented, Juan has taught me. So exit the sketch, maybe an extruded cut. Maybe shoot this through here. Say okay. I'm gonna blow a hole through this guy's chest. And basically, so if we decided that something needed to be modified on this model, we can come back here to the to the SolidWorks TS Elements part and let's let's grab a couple of faces that are near where that chest modification was. This is going to be a disgusting modification, but I just want to get across the point that you can do this through a feature and it will update. So we're going to modify this a little bit, accept it, and the T-splines model updates. It runs back through the feature tree and it updates. And you can throw fillets and stuff like that on there. And let's just go ahead and try. And just one comment. That's kind of the that's the one advantage that this workflow does have over even more traditional reverse engineering tools is that ability to continue to edit and push and pull that that T-spine model even after you've, you've pushed it down the process. And so to be able to have that scan data that you've read in and still be able to, to push and pull that even towards, towards the end of the modeling process um, is really, really unique with, with, this, with this combination. I have to agree with you, Matt. I, I think that, um, that actually this workflow within SOLIDWORKS, being able to access the T-splines file add some SOLIDWORKS features on it and then modify the, the uh, T-splines model and have the features update is, is, a, is a really, really awesome capability. Um, it's, it's the first time I've ever been jealous of the SOLIDWORKS guys, but it's a, it's a, really, cool, it's a really cool feature and really cool workflow. So, so that's, that's basically you know, kind of the idea behind this. And again, the, the goal behind this this webinar is not to say, hey, look at this, this is going to work for you every time. It's to, it's to foster some dialogue and to get you thinking about how T-splines is, I guess for back, lack of a better term, kind of the Rosetta Stone of the CAD world and how you can use T-splines and some of the tools that surround T-splines to bridge the gaps between significant areas of the, the 3D uh, kind of commuter computer modeling world. And so basically what we want to do is kind of just put this idea in your head, show you a really basic workflow, and then kind of throw a challenge out to the rest of the community here and say, okay, well, this is what we did, and here's some ideas. I guarantee you there's a million of you out there who are better at 3D code, and a million of you out there who are better at, at SolidWorks than I am. And what we would love to see is some input from you guys as to how this this thought process and how this workflow utilizing T-splines is kind of like we said the pivot point of the translator between all these different areas to to how you you know kind of work that you can do and and examples that you generate and ideas and you know all that kind of stuff and so um, just kind of want to throw that out there let you guys have it from here and um, and get an idea as to as to what you can do with it so um, that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show today. Uh, if there's any other questions, we'd love to love to entertain that. And um, and uh, thanks for coming. Okay. Well, thanks, Kyle. <clears throat> um, yeah. Just to um, just to kind of conclude on on my end, 
Um, the Treaty Code is a pro uh, program that we are offering now, both separately and bundled with T-splines, and we'll, we'll shoot you an email in a day or so following up after, after this webinar with more information as far as how you can, um, how you can purchase that. But, um, but yeah, I, we have some questions coming in, and, and, and this is really kind of the, the dialogue that we were just hoping to, to foster, so let's just take a look and see, see what kind of questions we have. Um, there's a question in here about to what degree uh, can you control the softening of, of angular models on export and concerned about the accuracy of the conversion for fit and function. Um, Stephen, th this, is, this is the issue that, you know, that we have with it and we wanted to basically really be clear about what the, the ex expectations that you can get from this are. And the, the kind of the state of the art right now is kind of smushy soft stuff. Um, we're talking internally about the possibility of generating some tools that may help that. Um, there's also a possibility that there's a better way to do this and, um, and another tool that maybe isn't on our radar yet. And so that's why we wanted to throw this out to the community and basically say, you know, here's, here's our best crack at it as of now. You know, what else is out there? What else do you guys know? And if anybody else wants to bring, you know, something to the party, uh, by all means, we'll give you your own webinar. So, <laughs> See, here's a, here's a question that, so it's a, I guess it's a comment. It would be great to be able to draw on a T-spine model to lay out how T-spine creates patches when it converts to NURBS, like the way 3D Coat lays out its quad meshes. And there is a... Inside T splines for Rhino, so you, you can see if, if Kyle, if you had that question box, you can uh, you can see that this is kind of how the T splines is converting to nerves by default in SolidWorks, and there's some areas that maybe are more or less optimized. And you can there is a command inside T splines for Rhino called um, I think it's called what TS uh, set set surface layout, and you can come in here and uh, and kind of there are some options. As I think it's probably uh, yes, define regions for conversion down there. You can come in here and kind of draw on the model as far as where you do want the model split up into different NURBS patches. And so, if you kind of double click on the ISO curves, then on each of the yellow lines, that that represents a border of, of when it goes to NURBS. So, um, that's kind of the tools that we have available today as far as uh, splitting the T spun out into NURBS patches. The, one of the things that we've been talking about and is the possibility of you know having a having a nerves or having a decimator um, that would allow you to be able to take a patch layout from something like this or a ZBrush patch layout and be able to maybe you know decimate it by curvature so that in this area in T splines you'd have you know fewer quads and then in the areas in here it would be tighter. Um, the that hasn't been practical in the past because most sub-D modeling systems have to have edge loops. And you'll notice even in here, if I pick on an edge, um, you know, I get a decent edge loop there. But if I pick up here, um, you know, I'll get kind of this crazy edge loop that runs through this thing. And basically, I think actually the leg was the one that got all spirally. Stop it. No. All right. Anyway, um, basically, what we, what what I'd love to see, I guess I should stop saying we. What I what I'm pushing for <laughs> is uh, is a quad based decimator where you could bring in a layout like this, decimate it by curvature, and then essentially make it uh, a little bit more accessible to use in T splines. Because when you're faced with a you know with a patch layout like this and you have a billion vertices like that, it it's you're kind of limited to kind of the UDT kind of deformations unless you want to go through and and decimate it manually by taking edges out yourself. So what I'd love to see is, and I think a tool that would make this a lot more useful is if you were to, to be able to decimate this thing um, and maintain quads. So um, if you guys think that's a good idea, chime in. If not, uh, and you have a better idea, please chime in on that as well. So like I said, this, this whole idea behind this is to, is to foster you know, some discussion and dialogue about this. What else do we have for questions? Um, it looks like uh, 
looks like most of them have been answered. So, great. Um, yeah. So again, as um, as uh, we'll we'll be sending out an email in a, in a couple of days or uh, with uh, recording this, and we would we really appreciate any feedback that you have on whether this. This type of tool is useful for you. Um, any other tools that you found that, that we could share with the community that do a good job of of coming from a scan mesh to usable NURBS and um, look forward to continuing the conversation. So here's oh here's I guess here's one question. This is we're leaving. Where's the best resources for learning 3D code? Um, and uh, maybe something that Juan or maybe someone else in the audience could chime in at, but. Um, Everything I learned was from Juan, so let me give you Juan's home phone number. No, I'm kidding. I, <laughs> Juan, uh, Juan did teach me a lot of stuff, but also the um, the the 3D Coat forum. There's a tutorial, a five-part tutorial that was written by just a forum member that is actually as good as any professional tutorial I've ever seen. And it's if you do. Um, if you look up 3D coat and rat, one eight hundred ask Juan. Yes. <laughs> um, if you uh, uh, if you Google 3D coat and rat, um, it should come up. Um, if not, um, you know, shoot us an email and we'll we'll dig it up, or maybe we can dig it up and post it somewhere. So, um, but the, there's a great uh, there's a great three part three part or five part tutorial that basically takes you through all the way from creating a, a voxel model from scratch all the way to retoppling it and texturing it and all that kind of stuff. And it's, I'd have to say, as, as good of a piece of software as 3D code is, the, the manuals and the learning files and stuff are really not awesome. So um, I, if I could, you know, just keep in mind that you may be a little bit on your own when you're trying to learn this. There's a decent community out there, so um, I think you're going to have to do a lot of forum, forum haunting. <clears throat> Pasco's jumping in and saying there's a workflow in ZBrush where you can convert a garbage scan with lots of mesh holes to quads. Um, sounds like he's just volunteered to do a webinar. So uh, Matt, I would uh, put the screws to him and have him put something together and show that. <laughs> Jan Rubin uh, mentioned YouTube. Um, there is a lot of 3D code tutorials on, on YouTube as well. Um, I did pick up a bunch of stuff off of that. So. <clears throat> So here's the question whether 3D Coat and ZBrush are similar in their operation. Do you, do you have any experience with that, Kyle? They're, they're similar in the fact that they're both brush-based modelers. Um, 3D Coat differs a little bit from ZBrush in the fact that ZBrush is strictly, uh, strictly uh, quad-based. Um, 3D Coat is actually a voxel modeler. And so um, there's some booleans and things like that that are available in 3D Coat that are not uh, as accessible in T splines or in um, in ZBrush. So the difference is kind of you can take any any piece of garbage and throw it into 3D Coat and it'll voxelize it, and then there's this workflow for turning it back into a decent mesh for uh, for painting or texturing or animation, stuff like that. Um, th uh, ZBrush, on the other hand, is a little fussier about what it'll take in, but as, as Pasco mentioned, there's a, there is a workflow for, for retopologizing that in, um, in uh, ZBrush, and, um, and seeing as he so generously volunteered to do a, to do a uh, webinar on that, he'll, uh, he'll show that here shortly. Any other thoughts or questions? I think we're getting pretty close to wrapping up here.
Okay. Well, good. Well, thanks everyone for coming, and we'll uh, we'll sign off. Fantastic. Thanks everybody for coming.